Hey there, it's Chef Andrea, and today it's another cookbook corner. We are going vintage. Join us, this is a fun one. Hey guys, welcome to another Cookbook Corner with Chef Andrea. In the Cookbook Corner, I just share with you cookbooks from my crazy big cookbook collection. Um, I think I've told you in the past, it's in the 400 range, something like that. Believe it or not, that's curated. That's like pared down from what it once was. And in my cookbook collection, I have cookbooks that I love to cook out of. I have cookbooks that inspire me. I have cookbooks that I learn things from. I have cookbooks that are classic favorites of my family and myself, and I go back to again and again. And then every once in a while, I have just some wacky gem that is just here because it's so much fun. And this is a perfect example of that. I don't know that this is a cookbook that I'm recommending necessarily, um, but I think it's a fun one to talk about. So here's what I have. This will be very familiar to some of you, and this will be complete mystery to some of you. Um, I found this bad boy. Check this out. You remember this guy? Boo, 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 boo. Some of you are like having serious 70s flashbacks right now. Um, this collection is by Betty Crocker, and it is complete. It has every thing that it was originally produced with. The copyright for most of these is 1973. So this particular collection, I'm guessing, and it is the Betty Crocker Recipe Card Library. Do you guys remember these? I remember, um, Anna, if you're watching this, your mom had one of these in her kitchen. My mom did not have this that I recall, but um, I remember going to Anna's house and just hanging out at the kitchen room table and eating you know, cereal for breakfast or something and just flipping through the recipe cards from that collection. So um, here we go. Uh, here's what is in this box. First of all, I found this at a vintage shop here in St. Augustine a good few years ago. I've had a lot of these like Better Homes and Gardens, like vintage style books. Um, whenever I spot them, at tag sales and junk shops and stuff like that. I always grab them because they actually have a lot of good recipes in them. But sometimes I grab them because they are hilarious. So I have a lot of friends to talk about in this episode. I'll try to keep it quick. But my friend Amy and I um, went junking one afternoon and came across a couple of this style cookbook. And I mean, we just lost our minds. We hung out in that store looking at these wonky vintage recipes, laughing, laughing, laughing. This has been... I mean, that was probably eight years ago, 10 years ago, something like that. It was one of the most fun afternoons ever. Um, we had an absolute blast. And um, I've always collected vintage books in part because I'm a cookbook collector, and I just think they're fun. I think the illustrations are interesting. The photographs are interesting. The recipes are so crazy. But these have a tendency to be a little on the scary side, too. I'm going to warn you. Okay, so what happens in the recipe box is that you get a title card for each section. So seasonal favorites is one of the first ones. And you can already see the very vintage photographs that are available here. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. I mean, I don't know that anything's all that funny, but it just tickles me. These photographs just crack me up. So we have season, seasonal favorites. Let's put some glasses on so I don't strain myself too badly. American classics, budget casseroles salads for every occasion. I'm going to tell you right now that in these vintage books, their idea of salad is not your idea of salad. I'm just going to let you know that. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but if you ordered a salad at a restaurant and a bowl of mayonnaise covered marshmallows came out, was that the salad you were looking for? Because that's their idea of salad. Um, men's favorites. You think I'm kidding? That is a title card. There is an absolute section called men's favorites. <laughs> Oh man, I gotta quit laughing. Hold, now I gotta find my place. There we go. Men's favorites. Children's parties. Entertaining on a shoestring. Dessert spectaculars. Here's another thing I'll tell you about these um, vintage cookbooks is watch out for words like celebration, jubilee, spectacular, because things start getting real, real weird when they throw that word in there. I'm just gonna tell you that. Like, uh, surprise, watch it, because... <laughs> It may not be as surprising as it is horrific, um, unless like hot dogs and pineapple are your thing. 
Comfort coffee. Hmm. Recipes for calorie counters. That's going to be interesting. Their, their concept of diet in 1973. Um, gifts from your kitchen. International favorites. Fondues. Look at the card for fondues. Okay. I actually dig a fondue. I really do. Do you ever make fondue? I do fondue now and then. I mean, a good cheese fondue. How can you beat that? But we even do that weird oil fondue where you fry your stuff. I know. We're weird. Um, snacks around the clock. Family desserts. Crowd size entertaining. Outdoor entertaining. Hurry up main dishes. That sounds terrifying. Um, impromptu party fair. You know there's cans of wieners and stuff in that one. Uh, family breakfast brighteners. See, you've got to watch out for that. As so I'm telling you, brighteners, uh, that might be scary. Foods that go places, gala menus. So these are menus based on cards that are in here um, and other, like, Better Homes and Betty Crocker books. So they're just putting together menus for you. Recipes children can make. One of the recipes in here, I'm not making this up, is called Butter Sticks. Your kids can eat a stick of butter. Um, and then family favorites. OK. So let's take a look at a few of these. The photographs alone are just absolutely hilarious. I hope that if you are a knitter, you are knitting. If you are a coffee or tea drinker, you are coffee or tea drinking. I'm having an English breakfast tea. I don't have any coffee here. But you guys know normally I'm an afternoon coffee drinker. but. I mean, caffeine. Let's just get our fix. Let's just make it happen. Um, okay, I want to start with salads for every occasion <laughs> because their concept of salads are not our salads. First of all, here's the cover card for salads. And I, frankly, I'm not sure that I see a salad on there. So that's some kind of stuffed something. That is jello with marshmallows and mayonnaise, like I was mentioning before. I mean, I guess that looks like a chicken salad or something like that. So, and then this is an aspic mold of green jello, and it's in butter lettuce leaves, and it's garnished with radishes. I mean, do you, do you hate the people you're feeding that to? What is for lunch today? Lime jello and radishes. I mean, that sounds like food you'd give to somebody you're mad at. All right, let's see what the salads are. Let's try it. Okay. We know there's going to be creamy salads, but yeah. That's probably canned fruit. So let's see. Yeah, it's a can of fruit cocktail drained. Two bananas. Okay, mayonnaise coated bananas. Whew. That is something. I, we need to move past that quickly. Um, an apple, so at least that's real. Green grapes, that's real. A jar of maraschino cherries. Marshmallows. Oh, and it's whipped cream. <laughs> so fruit completely submerged with marshmallows and whipped cream. That's salad. Sounds great. Um, let's see what else is in here. Peachy year-round salads. Festival peach salad. So cream, cottage cheese, almonds, cherries, and canned peach halves. Ew. And so you take the canned peach halves and you fill them with cottage cheese and add slivered almonds. I'm going to apparently put it on a bed with a lot of lettuce. Yeesh is what I have to say to that. Um, frozen salads. So that's just your whipped cream based salads that they're making, but they just froze them before they served them and then turned them out. If you're wondering how that works, the answer is badly. <laughs> this is ABE food. Do you know what ABE is? That's, I don't know where we came up with that term, but friends of mine in the industry, we always talk about food. It looks like it's already been eaten. Raspberry ring, uh, watch out. Um, that's just jello. Cool cucumber salad, so I was wrong about that. No, I was not. That is lime. So that's lime gelatin with shredded cucumbers in the gelatin and then garnished with radishes. That sounds like a salad for somebody you do not like. T tomato aspic, as aspic, we knew that would be in there. Um, see if there's anything interesting here. Gah, mushroom salad. 
fresh mushrooms, and you just dress them with gar with a garden uh, vinaigrette. I don't know about that. Do y'all just eat raw mushrooms just like that? I do not. This is this is food for drunks. So this is a um, what do they call this one? Italian appetizer. So those are canned artichokes, whole cherry tomatoes, whole olives. That is a day drinking mom who forgot she had people coming over. That is a can of tomatoes, a can of olives, and those three cherry tomatoes have been in her fridge for a long time. That's what was left. Day drink mom has party at five that she forgot about. Book club, it was at her house, and she forgot. Um, they got a classic Caesar, Caesar salad, taco salad. I could live with some of that. Uh, but more the um, mayonnaise and marshmallow-based ones are just really terrifying. But every once in a while, you'll see something that's a surprise, and boy, watch it for that. Okay, I think we all agree that we need to find out what is in budget casseroles. That scares me. Let's take a quick look at men's favorites, just out of curiosity. What do the men love? So men's favorites starts with... A uh, roast beef hoagie. Aw, and look, it's in his briefcase. So she packed him a hoagie with a dill pickle and put some carrot sticks in his briefcase. <laughs> Cream soups, cold and hot. That is not food my man loves. First of all, Michael does not consider soup a meal. Um, I love to go to um, pho restaurants and get big bowls of pho with rice noodles and broth and I always add shrimp and beef and stuff to mine. And so I always add, I have a good friend that goes with me to those. My friend Zan, he and I go up there. And I always invite my husband, Michael, you want to go? Zan and I are going to go get pho. And he says, hmm, do I want a bowl of hot mint water for dinner? No. That's how he feels about soups. Um, okay, cream soups, cold and hot. No. Man-pleasing appetizers. This one flipped my lid. This might be why I bought this, this collection. Okay, so a man-pleasing appetizer. These are cups of some sort of brown liquid with the center part of celery sticking out of them. The first recipe is called pow, and it's two cans of condensed beef broth, a cup of water, horseradish, and dill weed. Heat everything to simmer. Serve hot with celery swizzle sticks. See, the thing about pow, so that's a cup of canned bouillon and a celery stick. The thing about these books, and I'm not trying to be real judgmental here, but I feel like alcohol plays a big role in, in, in the day-to-day -day lives of folks in 1973. And um, I feel like, like the day-drunk mom, again, just l desperately looking for something to feed you know, her husband who reminded her way too late that day that it was card night at their house. That reeks of desperation and a mild level of inebriation, I think, is what I'm going to say about that. Um, bouillabaisse, chicken fricassee. These don't feel super man-friendly to me. Pot roast with sour cream gravy. Okay, Michael would go for that. Italian spaghetti with meat sauce, sure. Savory duckling on a spit. Yeah, I guess. I, are you going to do that? I don't have a spit, do you? Um... Peanutty pork chops. That's kind of interesting. Kind of Thai-style pork chops, I guess. So, it, okay, fresh tomato specials. See, this is that desperate mom thing again. Um, men's favorites. <laughs> if I fed Michael three slices of tomato on wilted lettuce leaves, what is that garnished with? It is garnished with minced green onion and snipped parsley. Uh-uh. That ain't dinner. I mean, uh, you know, that's just not how it works. Um, burgundy beef, that's probably pretty good. Beef stroganoff, that's still a winner even today, isn't it? Chef Greg um, here does a beef stroganoff and cast iron. You don't even have to pre-boil the noodles. It's fabulous. So, okay, I can live with some of these. Hot German potato salad, yeah, 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 I can accept some of that. I'll take some of that. Men's favorites, okay. Um, I was definitely curious about um, entertaining on a shoestring because, like, if – Three slices of tomato counts as a dinner. What happens when we're on a budget? So cheeseburger pie, that's one thing that happens. Gil. Ground beef in a pie crust. 
It'll feed a lot of people is what that's about, I bet, for very little. Um, okay, this is interesting to me. So this is curried fish in a rice ring. Okay, so first of all, this is one of the problems with vintage recipes. That does not look good. However, I have to say that I am always so intrigued by how many curry recipes show up in these vintage cookbooks from like 1950, etc. I think because in my world, like the idea of Indian cuisine and curries and things like that, it's like it had this resurgence with the yuppies, you know, in the late 80s, like the, the, the power working woman and, you know, making gourmet meals at home and branching out into like Indian cuisine. The concept of kind of like the, you know, four o'clock gin wielding crowd being into the curries that always catches me off guard I'm, I'm rather impressed with them frankly is what I want to say about that um because what I'm more picturing with that crowd is flank steak steak fix up you know like gray beef overcooked with probably instant mashed potatoes that's kind of more what I'm picturing happening back then um which isn't very kind of me but it is how it goes uh I want to know what your favorite memory of food from the 70s is that is one mildly embarrassing and two you actually still love it today you have to let me know I'll have to think about mine I have a few I'm a weird eater though see like here's a lamb curry um and so I want to see what happens when we get to fondues now look how many fondues there are like there are <laughs> fondue was a thing so here's the trick about fondue it takes a little bit of prep on your part, but fondue falls into the category of dinners that you trick your company into cooking for themselves. And I have always been a master at that. If you come to my house, I, I sometimes I'll have a sushi rolling station. You see what's happened there? I cooked all the stuff and, and you know got it all prepped up. Now you're going to roll your own sushi rolls. Um, I'm good at doing pizza stations. You can make your own pizzas. Um, I'm pretty. I'm pretty clever when it comes to sort of trick in my company into making their own dinner fondues fall into that category don't they so I think if you're you know the heavy drinking 70s crowd it's sorry you keep going to that but you know I mean it is what it is um Swiss fondue British brunch fondue what's British about it it's made with margarine flour salt pepper dry mustard and Worcestershire sauce that's what's British about it is I guess it's making a mock Welsh rarebit um Mexican midnight fondue Teenage kitchen fondue. So that's using cheese soup and apple cider, huh, to make a mock cheese fondue. French fondue. This is the weird oil fondue that I was talking about, where you get oil boiling away, and then you just dip stuff in it and fry it up on a stick. <laughs> Michael and I actually still like doing French fondue. We, I don't do that very often, but delicious um I don't even know what that is Scandinavian fondue so that's just seafood fondue party USA ham cubes Hawaiian fondue that's just using pork and spam and doing that in oil mini meatballs I can live with that um they made little corn dogs I can live with that uh oh empanadas What's well, an interesting idea is you make all the little dumplings, see them around the pot, and then you let people fry their little empanadas themselves. Nah, that's not bad. And one thing is at least they'd still be crispy. You know, that's a problem with doing fried appetizers is they're soggy by the time everybody eats them. And then the, I guess the rest of this is really just dips and things like that. But fondues, I have to say, I like a fondue. Look at this photo. So this is for snacks around the clock, which sounds like the way I like to eat. Look at that photo. So there's a picture of red liquid. <laughs> I assume is some kind of juice. Um, there's some sort of Swiss cheese. And there's cupcakes. You know, not bad. It's got a little still life action with the shiny apples and the plastic grapes. You remember plastic fruit? I do too. I tried to eat one one time. Um, this has some coffee cakes. I bet those are actually pretty good chocolate cookies cereal bars I'm sorry that's good eats 
I love a cereal bar. You love a cereal bar? I will make a cereal bar even today. That never goes out of style. Um, so yeah, this is mostly just cookies and things like that. Loaf sandwiches, uh, banana bites, nothing too bad in there. I always worry about anything with gelatin in it from back then, but I don't see, see, see too much of that in there. Um, and then of course soups, boy, they were big on the soups. Look, if that isn't in a 1970s soup, green goo and a tomato spilling out with mayonnaise based something. Ugh. Uh, that's all right um snacks around the clock i like it let's see what happens with ooh outdoor entertaining i bet you this is pretty scary so one thing i do love about 70s food is that their grilling always shows you raw beef again i always hearken that to a vodka intake situation you know what i mean you get home have your first martini, get the grill fired up, have your second martini. By the time it's time to eat, you're like, look, it's charred. Let's have a third martini and call that bad boy done. And the meats always look absolutely cold inside to me. Um, see what I mean? Here's another flank steak barbecue. Do you see the, <laughs> I like a nice pink steak, but y'all, that's not cooked. Steak kebabs, not too bad. Um, I remember classic burgers on the grill back in the 70s too and I still love let me tell you two things I love my charcoal grill and I always use a couple of um, match light briquettes not because I need them necessarily to start the charcoal I can do the charcoal in a char in a chimney in a starter chimney I love the smell of lighter fluid so I buy those lighter fluid soaked briquettes and throw a couple in there solely for ambiance. That's the only reason they're there. I light them up and I can smell lighter fluid in my yard and then I know it is a cookout. You know, that's just one of those things. One of those childhood things, lighter fluid. This to me is 70s in a nutshell. Ham steaks on the grill and a cold grill at that. They didn't even get very good marks on it. Uh, reeks of a little bit of a buzzed dinner. Um, spunky shoulder slices. Watch out for words like that. Let's see what's spunky about these. So the first thing that's spunky is that it's got molasses and brandy and dry mustard and ginger uh, and orange juice. So that is a lot of stuff going on there. But what is the meat? So this is smoked boneless pork shoulder butt. Do you ever buy smoked shoulder butt just ready to go? I don't know. Spunky. All right. I have to be honest with you, this looks like a fantastic idea. Fun with Franks. These are bacon wrapped Franks that have slices of cheese tucked under them or in them. They're split and it's in them. Check that out. All right, I would eat that off a of barbecue. <laughs> I like hot dogs. So they've just split, see, down here. Can you see they've cut that hot dog open and set the cheese in it and then wrapped it with bacon and grilled it up. <laughs> All right, that actually looks good. Chicken and foil. I, where's the chicken? Chicken and foil. I don't know what's happening in this picture, but I'll stick with the corn, Mom. Thank you. Um, Mexican chicken legs. Do you remember those, like, whole drummies that they'd try to do on the grill? They take forever. They were never really done. I remember those, too. Um... Some undercooked pork there. Shrimp and foil packs. That would work okay. I'm down with that. I don't know what these are. Ways with eggplant. I couldn't even tell what it was. Boy, that's a 70s picture for you. That's like a brain teaser. In the front are some sausages. The eggplant's behind. It's that purple ring <laughs> with a ring of raw onion and a broiled tomato. Oh, that'll make you not like eggplant. As if you needed another reason. Party potatoes. I'm down with a parboiled and then grilled potato. I can live with that. All right. And then I always love this. This is so 70s to me. Clean out a pineapple shell and put pineapple back in it. I don't know. What, Trader Vic's or something, right? Isn't that what it brings to mind? Something fun like that. Um, but pineapple, man, that was a big deal in that time frame. I don't remember ever eating pineapple as a kid, though. Uh, let's look at impromptu party fair. So we all know what that is. 
nobody planned and people are coming over. I remember cookbooks for a long time always had some version of this section in an impromptu party fair or, um, you know, unexpected company, what to put together. And, and then you'd get recipes for things and it would tell you that these freeze beautifully and reheat quickly for unexpected company. Y'all know that is a thing of the past, isn't it? I mean, somebody's knocking on your door and you're just sitting there, right? You are not turning off Netflix. You didn't invite them over, you're not opening the door. Unexpected company is a thing of the past. You won't even answer your phone, right? Text somebody, hey, we on for tomorrow, and then they call you right back. <laughs> Can you imagine if they showed up at your house and also expected broiled tomatoes on weird toast? Broiled grilled sandwiches. Impromptu party fair. Oh, no. Impromptu party fair. Well, you know what? If you don't like unexpected company, if you serve this, that problem will be solved. Chicken livers with scrambled eggs. So this gal has sauteed up chicken livers and topped them with canned mushrooms and served them next to room temperature scrambled eggs. Bye. <laughs> That'll resolve that problem. Uh, never going to Marge's again. Um... Chipped beef in popovers. I don't hate that idea. I don't know if I'd serve it to company, but she made popovers and somehow filmed them with cream chip beef. Oh, you know what she did? She made her popovers, tore them open, and then poured that cream chip beef sauce over them. That is not the worst idea I've ever heard. Whew. So you got to be so wor careful about how you word foods, too. Crusty salmon shortcakes. I don't know about a salmon shortcake. So that is salmon. They've made Bisquick biscuits. They've cooked salmon in condensed cream of mushroom soup with half a cup of milk and ladled it over the biscuits. Ugh. I do have people who tell me sometimes that they hate salmon. And, you know, like if that's what was happening, I get it. I understand. It's okay. Um... That is disgusting. So that is eggs and spinach. So she's whipped up eggs and baked them on top of store-bought cream spinach. And so it puffed into that weird sort of burnt egg thing on top of a green glob. That looks like Oxter the Grouch's favorite breakfast. So, yeah, whipping stuff up for a crowd. Boy, it's not easy, is it? Especially when they weren't invited and they were impromptu. Um... <clears throat> this is always a weird one for me, too, and I see a lot of this, but this is crab-stuffed ham rolls, like the seafood and ham combo. Do you love that? I don't know if I love that. I don't, I don't know if I can think of any seafood and... Well, low country boil. We put smoked sausage in with shrimp, so I guess it has its place. Um, what's really fun about these cards to me are the photos, trying to figure out what on earth it is, then reading the actual recipe to figure out what on earth it is, then thinking about who might have actually consumed such a thing. Occasionally you come across something that terrorized you as a kid, so that's kind of fun too. Um, you know, like the way you watch horror movies? You know it's going to terrify you and you can't stop anyway. That's what the, these recipe cards can do for me on occasion. And a um, lot of ice cream desserts. Those were really popular too. Don't ask me why. Have you ever made an ice cream dessert? <laughs> what a nightmare. Uh, they are not fun to do. What else did y'all want to see? Um, that was impromptu party fair. Boy, chicken livers and eggs if you come to my house. That'll solve that problem. Recipes for calorie counters. I wanted to look at that one real quick, too. Where are we getting to be here? Half an hour? We'll call it a day. Um, so juicy beef roast. So here's the other thing that's funny to me is that when they tell you it's juicy, then they've overcooked it. <laughs> like when you look at that photo, I mean, you kind of wonder if I'd, I'm showing you a picture of a handbag I'm about to donate. A calorie counter's guide. Include these basic four food groups for good health, especially when counting your calories. Meat, poultry, and fish. Breads and cereals. We all know those are very important when you're counting calories. Fruits and vegetables. And you can use canned fruits for that. And the vegetables they recommend, asparagus, bamboo shoots, bean sprouts, beans, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, green peppers. I don't know if she's mentioned a vegetable I like yet. Mm, that'll count your calories. I just won't eat. No, thank you. You haven't eaten for two days. Don't you want these bamboo shoots? No, thank you. I'm okay. Um, 
That does not look like a calorie, calorie counting dish to me. This is lamb chops with vegetables. Skillet veal, chicken broiled and baked. We know that's pretty good for calorie counters. Herb turkey roast. You know what's funny is that um, that looks like a deli turkey, but turkey is loaded with all kinds of vitamins and minerals, like way more so than chicken. I did not realize that until recently, so I've switched that over and been roasting more turkey for sandwiches than chicken to just have on hand for lean protein, like to add to salads and things like that. Egg foo young. Fish baked and poached. Those under, you know, like just baked until they just kind of fall apart. Salmon steaks on a plate. That'll make you not want to eat salmon too. That'll do it. With the skin served with it. Whoosh. Halibut with vegetables. Again, I, maybe the idea of some of these is just they're so bad you won't eat and then you just lose weight. I suppose that's part of it. Crisp cold relishes. I actually dig this photo a lot. Look at that. That looks like fun. But, you know, raw veg. Yeah, that's good for calorie counting. Um, calorie counter cookies. So these are meringues that they've made. And they've added weedy cereal to the meringue. How about that weirdness? So crunchy and hideously ugly, but loaded with fiber. I, think how would that would feel like to bite into that, all loaded up with those weedy cereal tear your mouth up angel food cake we know that works for dieters because nice and light low cal not calorie dense i don't know what that is glamorous grapefruit did you guys go on the grapefruit diet in the 70s i'm gonna tell you something i was a kid in the 70s so i didn't do diets right my mom went on the grapefruit diet so i was subjected to the grapefruit diet through no intention of my own whoosh mama um I don't remember the premise of it, but I think the idea was that you ate grapefruit instead of food, and then you lost weight. I mean, yeah, I guess if I chewed on lemons for a week instead of eating actual food product, I would be thinner. Um, I think that's about it in the desserts. I mean, excuse me, in the, in the locale. Um, but I do think, believe it or not, of all the recipes in here, the fun with kids is actually pretty good. The very first one is chicken dr drumsticks that are oven fried. Y'all, when I saw that, I thought, I might make that for dinner tonight. Baked potatoes, vegetable medley, and some oven fried chicken drumsticks. The way they're getting them crispy is they're tossing them in um, a little bit of gold medal flour. So they're just making their own shake and bake out of it. Uh, but they've got pancakes in here. I'm down with that. Um, I love this one. You guys do that for breakfast? Everybody has a different name for that. Toad in a hole something else. What's your name for the egg and toast bake? I love that. That's delicious. Um, okay, this one's gross. Pizza, and you're using hamburger instead of crust. So see what it is? It's just meat on a tray topped with pizza toppings. That is awful. That is so terrible. Um, mac and cheese topped with pepperoni slices or hot dog slices. 100%. I'm in. I'll go for that. I got no problem with that. Um, what was I going to say? Something about this other picture reminded me. Oh, my God. The worst ground beef ever. Okay, I'll tell you about that. Um, a meatloaf, which looks pretty good. Um, the rest of the stuff looks sort of terrifying. Apple bread. It looks like basically an apple-topped um, cake that you bake in a pan. Anyway, some of these things just don't look terrible. That's a nice... Look at that, hot dog and toast. If you don't have a bun, you just wrap it up in white bread and put cheese on it to glue it together. That's not half dumb. I could live with that. I do like hot dogs, y'all. Um, we get butcher box. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried them. And the butcher box hot dogs are the best hot dogs I've ever had in my life. Wow, this will scare you. Are you ready? If, listen, if you are scared of clowns, you need to look away. Because I want you to be able to sleep tonight. That is one of the scariest photographs I think I've seen in a long time. <laughs> you know, times, they're changing. What can I tell you? Um, what was once okay is not anymore. Um, trippy old recipes from the past. So one time, I'm 12-ish. Now I'm younger than that, 10. My mom's birthday is in July. 
summer was rough for us in Atlanta. The house we were in did not have air conditioning. Um, my mom worked in an office, so she was kind of cool during the days. And I went off to a summer camp. When I was 10, the camp that I went to was daycare. It wasn't really camp. And it was somebody's house. And when it was over 90, she would let us stay inside and play games. But if it was 85 to 90, we were just in the yard the whole day. It was a hot time in my life is what I'm here to tell you. And I preface that before I tell you what I did with this ground beef because I think that the heat might have been affecting my cognitive ability at that time in my life um, because I was making a lot of weird choices for a 10-year-old. And so my mom's birthday is in late July and the heat is in and this is boiled and I'm just not thinking very clearly and I want to do something for her birthday. And what does everybody tell a kid to do for their parent's birthday? Why don't you make her something? And I'm like, well, that's all well and good, but one, you would need to know how to make things and I don't. And two, I have a boiled brain, so I can't even think of how to make something. Um, what would I make? And so I went to the fridge. Her, it was her birthday. I don't know why, but I was home for a few hours without her. And I went to the refrigerator and she had just bought two pounds of ground beef. And so I took out the ground beef <laughs> and I used my hands to mold it on a sheet tray. So it said, happy birthday. And I ran out of meat. So I think I just put M or J, M for mom, or J for Joan. I might have started with M thinking I was going to spell out mom, but I was out of ground beef. So, and then I was like, happy birthday, M. She's not going to know what that is. So smooshed it back up and shaped it into a J. And then put it in the oven. What temperature? No idea. How long? Clueless. I don't, I'm 10. I'm baking a sheet tray of ground beef that spells out happy birthday, J. And baked it on a tray for as long as it took for her to walk through the door. And then I pulled it out and set it in front of her. <laughs> so needless to say, she was not thrilled with that gift. Um, I think that she was using a lot of restraint at that moment to be both diplomatic. Um, she didn't want to sound unappreciative of the effort that had been put forth. But I also think that she was mildly devastated that what what was for us probably four nights or more worth of really good quality ground beef needed to be thrown away. It was unsalvageable. I just, I don't know what we would have done with it. So I think that part of the, of her was a little like, wow, you know? Um, but when I gave it to her, I wasn't unclear that um, it wasn't, a uh, remarkable birthday gift is what I would say. Um, I do know that she said that while that looked lovely and she knew the effort had been put into it, she also said that she'd been craving Mexican all day and suggested we went out to eat. And so that was a win. Um, as it turns out, neither of us had to eat overbaked letters um, shaped out of ground beef for dinner. And instead we went and got Mexican. So that was great. Um, but, you know, I could have been a recipe writer for impromptu birthday foods. Um, you know, just spell out your friend's name in eggs and livers, and you'll be good to go. So, anyway, this is a really fun one. I found this at a vintage market that's here in St. Augustine. If you're ever in this area, you a must-do for you. We have great antique and vintage stores in this area. The Uptown area of St. Augustine is called Uptown, um, and it's also known as the Shops of San Marco, uh, St. Augustine. Be careful, because there's a St. August, there's a San Marco Jacksonville as well. This is St. Augustine, and the shop that I love so much is Cool and Collected. And you can find their Facebook page. They post photos all the time of the rooms that they're changing up with all of their vintage collections. There are so many cool finds in there and a lot of cool things in my house came from Cool and Collected and I just love going in there and just seeing what they have and they have a whole room devoted to kitchen. Pots, pans, Pyrex, this guy came from there. So many neat things. So if you're ever in this area, 100% check out Cool and Collected. You could hop on their Facebook page and check them out now. So um, cookbook corner, surprise. Don't um, ever go with 1973 as your go-to spot for really good foods. But um, it is fun to look at these old vintage things. And I, like I said, it's so funny. Sometimes things sound really delicious. A lot of them do not. Um, but put a comment below. Tell me one of your um, 
favorites from the 70s that either, like I said, you still are sneaky and you still eat today. You don't want anybody to know it, but like my oil fondue, we still do that. Um, it is so delicious. But uh, I would love to know what were some of your 70s favorites. And then throw down some 70s nightmares. Any? Did you ever spell out somebody's name in ground beef for their birthday and bake it on a tray until it was beyond done? Um, what was a nice, interesting 70s food experiment that you got into? Uh, anything that your family did that you remember? I would love to know. My friend Amy and I have always joked um, that we should have a party and have everybody bring a recipe. But the deal is the recipe must come from 1965 to 1975. And you have to bring your inspiration for it with you. Wouldn't that be fun? Somebody throws that party, invite me to that party. I would love to come to that party. Uh, all right, guys, that's it for me. I've been recording all day long and I just wanted to get out another cookbook corner. It's been a little while. I promise you my next cookbook corner will be a cookbook that you really want and you really want to cook out of and you might want to add to your own collection. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this one. I sure did. And now I'm craving both pineapple and hot dogs. What? That can't. That's not okay. So, all right. Everybody have a wonderful afternoon. Join me on the next Cookbook Corner. Throw some comments below. I'd love to hear what you're still, still going for that's in the 1973 uh, vintage range for you. Have a delicious day. We'll see you next time.